Welcome to this OCR Cambridge Technicals Level 3 in Information Technology video. This is Unit 6 Application Design and we're looking at Criteria 1. Describe the key stages in application development. As with all the other units, if you've started any of them, um, you'll know that P1 is a description of the kind of theory that surrounds the topic theme. So if you've made the website, you'll know that P1 covers different features of the website. You'll know if you've done Unit 8, Unit 8 P1 covers um, theory around um, project management and if you've done the spreadsheet unit then you'll know that P1 covers spreadsheet theory and uses. So here you're describing key stages in the application development. We're going to have a look at um, what the guide says and then we'll have a look at a student's work. So in P1 it says describe the key stages in application design as with all other units, it gives you a little bit about what you have to do. Learners must describe the key activities of different stages in application development. They should describe these for a named application development model. This can be in the form of a report, a presentation with detailed speaker's notes, user guide or tutor resources. Now, if we return to the um, content section, at the beginning of the syllabus, it actually gives you an overview of the application development stages. So the requirement stage, the design, the implementation, the testing, the deployment and the maintenance. If you've done uh, unit eight, you may identify or you may feel that some of these stages are familiar. 1.2 gives you the different application development models that you could cover for your P1. Now again, you may have come across these if you've done unit eight because project management follows similar or can be used to follow similar development models so what you've got to do for p1 is describe what each of these areas are and then you've also got to um, talk through probably three or four of these different um, models develop models what are the features of them what do they do? What's the advantages and disadvantages? And that covers P1. Let's have a look at a student's work an example. So here we've got the P1 for a candidate. Uh, introduction to the P1, which is basically saying what they're going to do. They're going to describe the different stages. Then they're going to look at some of the application development models. Again, these are ones from the unit guide uh, and I think they've also added their own one. They've included an image remember to always uh, reference the images and where you get information from. They then talked through the different stages the requirement, the design, the implementation, the coding, the testing, the deployment and this covers these sections here. There's the maintenance one. Maybe not that much detail but it does describe what happens in the maintenance section last stage in the application development model which only takes place once the project has gone through all the other stages without any issue. Very basic level, You're probably looking for a little bit more information there but it is a description. Second part of P1 asks you to talk about the characteristics. Now again if you've done unit 8 this will be very familiar with you. You might be able to use some of the information from unit 8 and put it in here. Talk about what is the waterfall model talk about um, the features, include a diagram, an image, always useful. Talk through what happens at the different stages. Now this is where it's slightly different because what you need to do is for the waterfall method, if you choose to do that, you need to describe each of these stages. So in the waterfall method, what happens in the requirement stage, the design stage, the implementation stage, the testing stage, the deployment stage and the maintenance stage. So unit eight was slightly different because it was like an overview of what the waterfall method is. And this one, you're actually breaking it down into those different headings. And if we look back at the uh, student's work, you can see implementation stage, development stage, testing, and so on. Deployment stage, maintenance stage. And a little bit of information about what is happening in that stage. Got some advantages and disadvantages. Then they move on to the iterative model. Uh, is yep yeah, it's in there second one what is it diagram and then we're looking for planning 
requirements analysis they just write a sentence or two about the iterative model and each of those key areas within it then agile same difference rapid application design spiral model prototype model find quite a few and uh, always including a diagram, always including information about how each of those stages are met. Now the last part of P1, which isn't actually mentioned in the um, P1 requirements, if we go back to that, P1 says describe the key stages in application development. It doesn't mention anything about uh, gathering data, but this is included in the user guide. So I would recommend that as part of P1, you also include this information. Copy and paste it into Word, and then discuss with examples, what is a client and user interview? Why is it used? What is a closed and open question? What is leading questions? What is funneling? How do they structure interviews? Observation tasks, and so on. Um, as I said, this isn't actually in the requirements. There's nothing explicitly that says you have to cover it, but belt and braces, just making sure that we're on the right track, I would include it. So again, if we go back to the student's work, you can see here, we've talked a bit about what it is, how it's used. Leading questions, funneling, structure, observation of tasks, and so on. So quite a bit to do for P1, but fairly simple. Don't forget to include this bit. Remember for this section, the first one, you're talking about what are the general features of these um, parts or stages of application development. And for the second part, you're talking about the waterfall method and how these different stages fit into that. And then I would probably do three or four from this list. And then the final part is the methods of gathering user requirements. And that is your information or kind of evidence of information for P1. Thanks for your time. Got any questions? Don't forget to reach out.